Hey guys, welcome back to another Record Box Masterclass. Today we're going to be going over number four, which is going to be dealing with your overall Record Box appearance playlist and just small little features that you may not know how to set up or where to get them, but they are in fact in Record Box. And then we're going to be going over a few playlist related items uh, and how to create one and kind of what they're used for. So this one's going to be a quicker one. But to start off, uh, we're going to be talking about the key. So right now I have everything sorted by key. Depending on the music that you have, you may have more tracks, you may have a few less. But all of them are going to have a key that record box analyzed due to them being MP3 files. So sometimes with waves, the key does not recognize. So that's why I say the MP3 is easier to use. Uh, they're not 100% accurate, but they're pretty close. Uh, I like it better than the competing software such as Serato or Tractor, I think the record box ones are the most accurate. But for somebody who hasn't done music their whole entire life, this may be confusing to you, such as how would a D match up harmonically with other music? So that's a big part of the music is finding songs that harmonically fit with each other. And this initial setup process is going to be your best friend. So the first thing I did when I started learning Camelot is I downloaded a very similar chart to this and saved it to my desktop. But I'm going to reference this a couple more times. Uh, so you can see this chart right here and the same as the keys. So for example, the D, the D in record box, we're going to find on here. So not D minor, but it's going to be the D major, so the 10B. And then we'll find, for example, a B minor. So it's like, what does the D fit with? And it's B minor, A major, or G major. Can you remember that? Yes, you can. I've remembered most of them at this point just due to how different DJs set up their record box libraries. But knowing that a 10B works with an 11B and it works with a 9B, or it, there's a high chance that it works. Um, this is just relative. They won't always work, but this is kind of how the songs are harmonically laid out. So like a 3A works with a 2A, works with a 1A. So when you're mixing into songs, you can harmonically mix up the scale. So knowing that, what you're going to do is you're going to go to settings, you're going to go to view, and you're going to scroll down to where it says key display format, and you're going to go to alphanumeric. So what this is going to do is it's going to change your keys up on you. So classic is the normal notation, how if you've been doing music for a while, you should be very familiar with. And alphanumeric is the Camelot scale, which I'm going to be using the entire episode because this is what I like to mix in. It's easier on the fly. I don't have to think as much. And I know, oh, a 7A into an 8A, I'll take a chance if I'm just doing a mix on the fly. So now that we have that, we don't really need to do much more. Uh, we don't need to see iTunes, so in the layout here, we're not using iTunes, we don't need to see that. And then this, you don't, I, I never use the search search mobile. Uh, you can, but I don't get into it because I keep computer with computer. Mobile's handy, I've used it a couple times, but it's, it's just not what I'm going to be teaching in this episode. So I was mentioning before about playlists. So right here, we have our collection. So this is all of the songs in our current record box library. When you go up to collection, this is where they're all going to be found. You can go down to playlist, right click, create new playlist. So we're going to, I usually just do new playlist. So we're just going to be like test one. So this is going to be a playlist and then we'll do one more test two. We're not going to talk much into intelligent playlist because it's with playlists, you have more control what goes into it, and we don't have enough information for intelligent playlists yet. So we'll have these two playlists right here. So this is essentially how I'll organize my sets or what songs I want to use, or I'll organize stuff by genre. So the first thing is going to be doing is going to be finding uh, our BPMs. Uh, so let's, for example, let's take these two songs, 87 and 88 drag and drop. And then we'll take the rest of them or we'll take these ones that are 121 to 
128 essentially and drag them into test two. So now what we have is we have our collection and we have our playlist. So there's two different ways of deletion. If you delete something from the collection, it's deleted indefinitely. But if you delete something from the playlist, so we'll go to this song and let's say we don't want it in this playlist. We don't want this song in here. We just want the crush on you song. So you hit delete. See where it says remove, remove select songs from the playlist, drag select remove, okay. So that will remove from the playlist. There's an option that you can enable uh, where it's you right click remove from collection, whereas the delete is kind of your friend, it will just remove from the playlist. So unless you want to delete it from your actual hard drive, which removing it from the collection will, uh, and removing it from record box, you're just going to want to go with the remove from playlist for now. So just stick with that until you know what you're doing with the remove from collection, because you can do a lot of damage to your main collection if you only meant to delete from a playlist. So I would just use the delete command to make sure that your playlist is always good to go and you're not deleting anything from the actual collection, which they're back in here, but there's no more playlists because we deleted it. So that's going to be the end of the episode four. Uh, the next one, we're actually going to be getting into the basis of the songs and how to lay them, them out. So everything's gridded properly, everything's synced, you can have hot cues. Um, we're going to be getting into the fun stuff where we actually play a track or load a track in Rekordbox now. All of the initial setup and the downloading is complete, so I'll see you guys in episode 5.